Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Warrior's Corner. Presenting next, the Army Enterprise Marketing Office. Marketing to the Army, marketing the Army to Generation Z. All right, testing. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Wait a minute, I know this is the last session of the day, and I understand that many of you have a um, appointment with the Congressional Reception, so the fact that you're actually here means that you are truly excited about the topic that we're about to talk about. But be first, before we do that, there's a whole bunch of folks around here not knowing what's going on. So if I raise my right hand, I want you to clap one, hand, one time. If I raise my, set, my left hand, I want you to clap two times. And if I raise both of my hands, I want you to scream, clap, just as loud as you can as if you were actually in the football stadium for your favorite team, which is mine is the K Kansas City Chiefs, okay? All right, so let's try this one time. Right hand. Left hand, right hand, left hand, both hands. All right, now somebody's going to come around the corner because they want to see really what we are over here talking about today. So I want to thank you again for actually coming. My name is Antoinette Gann, and I am the new Chief Army Marketing uh, Officer for the Army Enterprise Marketing Office. And let me tell you, I am truly excited to be with you today. This is a topic that is not just near and dear to me, but I think is near and dear to all of you, and that's the reason why you're here today. Now, I've only been in the job for one month, so being that I've only been here for one month, I had to come with reinforcement. And my reinforcement today are three, my three directors that are here to my right. We got Colonel John Horning, who is actually our Director for Strategic and uh, Innovative and Data. We have Shannon Johnson, who is our uh, Marketing Execution. And the newest member to our team, Colonel Steve Battle. He does our Regional Marketing. Before we get into um, some of the dynamic things that they're going to tell you about, I just want to give you a little bit of context. So AMO, which is the Army Enterprise Marketing, if you haven't visited our booth, we've got one more day. Sorry we don't have any goodies for you, but at least we can show you some real cool videos. Um, we've been around for a little, almost four years now. In addition to that, we've also established a new functional area, which is FA58, FA which is a marketing officer. So many of the individuals that are part of our office are actually part of this new functional area. And the amount of time that we've been around, we've been methodically modernizing Army marketing from the inside out to ensure that the Army is in a position of success by building accountability through successful improvements in data analytics, research, and measurement. We are taking Army marketing from the industrial age into the information age and beyond by modernizing the prospect's journey from delivering the soldiers and leaders of tomorrow. Our research tells us that the Army has just what it needs for the Gen Z population. You know what? They just don't know it yet. And so we're working to get them to understand their passion, their purpose, and how we actually, they need to be connected to not just their community, but also many of the other connections that they can actually find by being a member of the U.S. Army. From a marketing perspective, each of our individual efforts, from the campaigns we've launched to the stories that we see on our Go Army channels, and if you haven't visit our GoArmy.com website or even our channels on YouTube, I just ask you to go out there and take a look. All of these, and especially our news media outlets, are showing all the things that we are tackling right now to close the knowledge gap that exists with specific barriers and also at different points in time. We're accounting for our marketing dollars. Let me say that again. We are accounting for our marketing dollars and showing a return on investment resulting in marketable attributable contracts. Yes, not just leads for our recruiters, but actual contracts, ensuring that we have the next generation of leaders served behind us. We're also in the process of executing a regional marketing system that nests our regional efforts with our national execution. And yes, we just launched back in March the Army's brand new redefined Be All You Can Be for the new generation. Say that yes, absolutely. 
But this is also just not defining what Be All You Can Be is about for us that remember the Be All You Can Be campaigns. But for the new generation, this is about value proposition of the Army service and the Army's promise of the place of true possibilities. All this strategy that I'm talking about, it builds to the wonderful campaigns that you see. And let me tell you, these, the information and the things that go behind the campaigns that we put together, this is truly one of a kind. The marketing that we are doing right now, it just cannot be done alone. So as we are doing our part, we are ensuring that, we've, uh, that new policies, programs, and benefits like the future soldier prep course, recruiting incentives, and yes, even the new structure that the Secretary of the Army and the Chief of Staff of the Army just actually announced. This we are doing to attract the right talent to become in our Army. And in concert with our accessions partners, TRADOC, USAREC, and Cadet Command, AMO is on the forefront of understanding the young American that we are seeking to be a part of our team of teams. Not only are we doing that, but I would be remiss if I say, if I forgot to actually mention our great teammates at Team DDB. Our advertising agency in Chicago, their Omicron agencies and others who are providing us the industry expertise every step of the way. Before I turn this over to our directors to give you a little bit more, I want you to watch this short video of highlights that just even more about the things that I just mentioned. Ladies and gentlemen, this is AMO. In this unprecedented recruiting landscape, the Army needed a new kind of subject matter expertise. In 2019, we stood up a new functional area composed of experts in marketing. An organization that serves as a beacon of the Army's brand and vision, with industry-leading capabilities in marketing strategy and innovation that don't exist anywhere else in the Army. We are AMO, the Army Enterprise Marketing Office. Our purpose could not be clearer. Attract quality talent to fill the Army's ranks now. People who will provide credible deterrence into 2030, and who will be senior leaders in 2050. To achieve this, we prioritize analytics, follow facts, and create world-class data-driven marketing ecosystems to connect with the force of tomorrow. Mission success requires modernizing our data systems and conducting rigorous research to improve our understanding of a new generation's attitudes and behaviors. We pinpoint prospects using a sophisticated audience segmentation model, identifying who they are, where they are, and what they're looking for. Map their decision journeys, and create integrated campaigns while managing a comprehensive visual identity, all to the standard of the world's most influential brands. Revealing to prospects all the possibilities the Army provides, and redefining what it means to be all you can be. Hey, nice shot. Our forecasting, modeling, and reporting provide the entire Accessions Enterprise with a clear picture of our marketing performance. So together, we can deliver results that are both powerful and precise. We at the Army Enterprise Marketing Office are your partners, your brand stewards, and your source of strength in the recruitment of a new generation. Good afternoon. Thanks for sticking around uh, this late in the day for our presentation. My name is Colonel John Horning. I am the Director uh, for Marketing Strategy, Innovation and Data, and I'm an FA-58 Marketing Officer. 
I want to talk to you this afternoon a little bit about, not so much about Gen Z, which you can read about in, in plenty of places, but how the Army is marketing to them, the things that we're doing, and kind of how the Army Enterprise Marketing Office operates. First off, I'd like to draw your attention to the slide um, showing what we call our house of possibilities, resting on our brand positioning statement of possibilities. A positioning that revealed itself as a result of our primary research with the prospect audience and getting to know and understand them from the perspective of what's important to them, what's driving their decision making, um, where their barriers are, what they're looking for in life. And we discovered, or it was revealed to us in this research that we conducted, that a positioning for the Army that we can own and that means something and is connected even to what we deliver as possibilities. Above that are the various products or ways to serve that we market to the prospect audience. As you might imagine, these various products, as you can see, are each associated with somewhat of a different audience, target audience, and a different value proposition. So we look at individually to understand the needs and help the stakeholders from enlisted to officer accessions and ROTC to the reserve component and new uh, for the Army this year as we're working into it is even DA civilian. There's a lot of great Americans who uh, may want to serve the country in, in important work uh, but just not wearing the uniform while doing so. And so we're assisting Chara as well in, in a new campaign for DA civilian. So we're looking at the broad spectrum of the labor market, the different ways to pursue service, and then the value propositions associated with each of those. And as you can see, they all nest under the Army, and they're going to all nest under Be All You Can Be, as we apply them to each of the product efforts. Can I get the next slide, Laura? So I've got a, a, a diagram here, which I think um, in those in, in private industry, if you look at this, you'll say, well, that's not anything new, and you're right. That's that's essentially a capturing of standard marketing. It's what we do. In my directorate, I'm the director of, of uh, strategy, innovation, and data. I've got two halves. Half is really kind of a business intel. Primary target audience research conducted in the field, qualitative and quantitative, to understand the beliefs, desires, motivations of the target audience for whichever of the product offerings or whichever campaign we're putting in the market. But we're going out and we're talking to people and understand, gleaning insights. Then we're marrying that with our own data capture ability. So our own ability to attribute our marketing campaigns, efforts, outcomes, the actions, the actions people are taking as they interact with our marketing efforts. Together, the data analytics and our understanding of the audience from a attitudes and beliefs perspective informs and enables us to create campaigns that speak to them and delivers to them on the value proposition, depending on the product, which is meaningful in a way that our audience wants to hear and as you'll hear shortly as we deliver in the way that they want to consume that information. What I want you to take away from this is research with the audience data on performance informs our decisions. It develops or gives us the basis to develop our marketing plans, which then we translate only after the science has been done, we translate into the sort of the art side of it. So marketing is art and science. I think a lot of people think it's art, um, and, and there is actually a, a very important creative aspect to that, but it starts with the science first. And your Army Enterprise Marketing Office is deep in the science, in understanding each of the audiences that we are communicating with, and then bringing to life campaigns that can speak to them and deliver to them this idea of the Army is a place of possibilities. No matter if you want to serve as an officer, no matter if you want to serve as a civilian, no matter if, hey, I want to serve on the weekends in my community, where I can be of a help to my community, or whether someone's all in on full-time, active duty, enlisted, and being the future Sergeant Major of the Army. What we do is we apply the industry best practices in marketing at the Army Enterprise Marketing Office. 
What we are not doing is operating off of N equals one. We are talking to the audience, we're learning about them, and then we are developing campaigns that speak to what they need and what they want to hear in our best effort to convince them to consider the Army as a career path so that we can then get them in touch with our recruiters who can really make that face-to-face, -face, close the deal, and then and communicate to them in a more one-on-one -on -one personal way uh, to eventually become a soldier. I'm going to pass this off to my colleague who's going to talk a little bit about how we do that. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon, team. Uh, my name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Shannon Johnson. I'm the Marketing Execution Director and an FA-58 at AMO. Um, really quick, I want to, uh, before we jump into my slide, um, that really captures um, in as succinct a way as possible what you see within marketing execution, what we're able to deliver um, to the prospect audience is um, recognition to what goes into what we do. And most of what AMO does um, is executed via contract. And so I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize the, um, the amazing amount of support that we get from our business management directorate, um, directed by, uh, or led by uh, Ms. Cristina Ocampo, and uh, full of program analysts, managers, et cetera, that make sure that we're doing what we need to do from a, a financial standpoint um, with getting the funding that we need to execute contracts and have them awarded on time. Because if that wasn't the case, we would not be um, able to execute what we're able to do. Secondly, um, really want to thank the partnership that we have with our, our uh, marketing agency, DDB. Um, the teamwork that we have to really get products out um, and making sure that it's aligned with the Army message and uh, key themes is truly important. It's a great partnership that we have and, and appreciate the work that we're able to do. Um, so within execution, I think from the title that I have up here, um, a lot of things that people perhaps don't understand is execution only does commercials. Uh, it, there is a lot more to the execution um, activities that are completed outside of the commercials that you see. Um, I've got four branches within my directorate, uh, creative development and production, social and earned media, own channels, uh, which is also most commonly understood as GoArmy.com, as well as my paid media team. And what we do um, is 100% grounded in research and, and data, as Colonel Horning described, um, from the standpoint of making sure that we have a, a knowledge of where it is, where we're planning on going, and a strategy behind that before we even start. Uh, grounded in research, grounded in, with benchmarks to know what we expect to achieve, um, so that we're able to hold ourselves accountable to uh, return on investment. We want to make sure that we're um, using the money that the government in, you know, instills in us from a marketing execution standpoint to the best of our ability, and we use it as efficiently as possible. And so with that, um, with our creative pr development and production teams, those are teams that um, go out, uh, develop the uh, commercials that you see. Hopefully you all are seeing those on linear television now with our um, upfront media purchase that we were able to have uh, content during our, our football games, be it with, the, um, with NCAA football as well as um, professional football, and uh, as well as um, within the digital space. Now, I will say for those of you who say, well, I'm not seeing commercials in the digital space, I would say, great. You're not supposed to. That is AMO, Army Marketing Dollars, working as efficiently as, as we can because those commercials to recruit people into the United States Army are not meant for people that are already in the Army. So there is data behind the work that is going through as far as um, algorithms, et cetera, to make sure that we are feeding our um, advertising and marketing to the appropriate audience, to our prospects. Um, as we go forward, there's um, potential for us to expand that into the influencer space. Um, but for right now, we're really focusing on the prospects and, and um, showing people what it would be like to come into the United States Army. Um, with that, our social media. This is, uh, you know, again, where, do, where are we within the social media space? Well, GoArmy.com, which is our storefront, which all of our um, assets are tagged and tracked to um, direct people to go visit and receive information about joining the Army. Um, our, our fill of our um, organic content, 
uh, where we go to organizations, army installations uh, across um, the United States as well as international to get that authentic soldier content and share that story, um, as well as incorporate um, questions and concerns that, that prospects and their families may have about what it means to join the Army. And so we try to use that authentic soldier story um, to, to express and to you know, quell any sort of, of gaps, um, trust gaps that, that, prospect, that the prospect audience has with joining the Army by having soldiers tell that story. And for the commands and the units that have helped support us in that, I truly appreciate your support because we could not do that without your support and having the soldiers um, available to, to have that content capture. Um, with, our, with our paid media, um, I will say that it's, it's a great integration. So from my standpoint within uh, marketing execution, my focus is really on national media buys. Um, we do uh, quite a bit with partnerships and um, executions that happen both at the national media level um, as well as, as um, incorporating buys that, that are executed at the local level. And so with that integration of national and local, uh, we try to do the most that we can to be, again, as efficient with our Army dollars, getting as much as we can for the most efficient price possible. And with that said, I will go on ahead and pass the mic off to my counterpart, Colonel Battle. Yes, sir. All right, ma'am, I'm bringing it around third. My name is Steve Battle. I'm the Director of Regional Marketing at the Army Enterprise Marketing Office. And I hope you can appreciate how this briefing is even kind of constructed to tell the story of our office and how we engage with and communicate our uh, values proposition, our employee values proposition directly to our target audience. We start off with strategy, we move down to national, and now we're going to go down to local. We're drilling the message down as we communicate to our target market and then driving them down on their journey as far down a marketing funnel as possible from awareness down through consideration to the presentation of their uh, contact information, which when they can hand off to our colleagues at uh, Recruiting Command or Cadet Command. So as a director of regional marketing, I'm going to take you a little bit through how we're designed organizationally and then what we're expected to do locally and regionally. So from a national perspective, we have five regional marketing offices. Not all of them are stood up yet. I got two that are at uh, IOC uh, and then the rest are being built throughout the 2402 uh, movement cycle. Those two that are IOC, or initial operating capacity, are on the West Coast and then the Midwest regional marketing offices. These regional marketing offices are run by a lieutenant colonel with five FA-58s, uh, excuse me, two lieutenant colonels, one primary, one deputy, and then four FA-5804s designed and trained specifically to deliver that employment values proposition directly to our target audience given their segmentation either psychographically or geographically wherever they reside in the country. We are aligned regionally uh, in accordance with USAREC boundaries. So our boundaries are the same as the Recruiting Command Brigade boundaries and designed very specifically therein because A, USAREC uh, gets the most of our business, uh, but B, um, they have the biggest mission by far of any of our accessions partners. That's not to say we leave Cadet Command out of the loop, we certainly do not. Uh, in fact, our regional marketing offices routinely communicate uh, both with USAREC brigades and Cadet Command brigades. Uh, designed to not only kind of understand the regions and the target markets within the region, but also apply their marketing acumen to that understanding. Codified in both an annual marketing plan by region designed to support each one of those brigades, but also designed to inform some of the processes you see up here at the national level. So as Shannon goes through her national buys, she is informed by a regional marketing perspective that allows her to make a little bit more nuanced or refined purchases. Also designed around John as he develops his strategy, his annual strategy, uh, how does he incorporate our regional understanding uh, to his annual marketing plan? One of the things that you'll find moving forward is a greater integration with and connection with our accessions partners, primarily at the USAREC level and also at the Cadet, Cadet Command level moving forward. Our regional marketing offices, especially in the West and the Midwest, have made phenomenal improvements on both the connectivity but also the results 
uh, when we start talking about how a prospect both understands what it means to be in the Army, how to connect with a recruiter, and then uh, going forward, uh, how to kind of be a real brand ambassador themselves as they promote their understanding of what it means to the Army to their uh, social circle and network. Ma'am, that's all I have from Regional Marketing. Thank you very much for your time. All right. Thank you, John, Shannon, and Steve. So before I go into my closing comments, I just want to take a few questions from the um, floor, if there are any questions. It's one back there. And I'm not sure if I can hear you, so you may have to come up here. Oh, we got the mic. Don't drop the mic. I'm the Army Reserve Ambassador for New York, and the question which I have is Minuteman scholarships. Last fiscal year, we left 100 on the table. What can you do to help get those Minuteman scholarships out? We give away about a quarter million dollars per cadet, and we left 100 on the table last year. Yep, so thank you for that question. And um, what we do is we actually work with a Cadet Command. And that's really one of the things that Cadet Command is working on right now, uh, being able to tell the message and get people to understand what the Minuteman Scholarship is all about. From a marketing perspective, I'm not necessarily sure that we have something that's directed, pointed to the Minuteman um, Scholarship, but we definitely, and many of the Center of Influence events that we do, are helping to be able to share that message and get people to understand. I think it's not just even about the Minuteman Scholarship, but there are other, the other Cadet Command Scholarships as well that we have a lot right now that are being left. It's again, too, about how we market the Army and getting them to be able to see the true possibilities that could be um, out there if they even just take a chance on something that's different than what they've been used to. Another question. Hi, Davis Winky, Army Times. Now that AMO is going to be task organized under USAREC as a DRU to the secretary, um, how do you foresee synchronization with planning and execution of marketing campaigns? And then also when it comes to you, Colonel Horning, long-term strategies to improve the conversion of leads into recruits. Yeah, so I, I'm going to just start off that, and John, I'll give it to you so you can. The, the one thing that I think it will do is it's going to make us stronger. If you look at the Be All You Can Be campaign, we really did a lot of that with that, with that actual campaign of making sure that recruiting command was very nested in what we were doing. And because of that, I feel like we've established a lot of momentum in being able to launch that and know that everybody was on the same sheet of music as we were presenting that campaign. Our challenge now is just to continue that momentum and make sure we do the same things, given that we're going to be all one big happy family. I tell people we may have been cousins right now, but now we're truly going to be brothers and sisters in the fight of making this happen. Davis, thanks. I, I think it's a great question. Um, I don't want to jump ahead of the decisions that the Army leadership is going to make on how the integration will occur. Frankly, those are active discussions right now. Um, but what I can say, and what, what AMO and the FA58 community are positioned to be able to enable, is that regardless of the physical structure or geographic location of the decision being made, it's going to be based in the same marketing sort of cycle as what I showed here, which is still going to be based on first understanding the audience identifying the insight, putting together an integrated campaign across all of our communication methods, and then producing excellent creative that speaks to that. The decision of when that will occur or under what circumstances, you know, exactly, I think that, of course, there's a new command structure being built. So there will be some decision authorities that will go with that. Um, at the end of the day, though, the reason that the Army has this particular functional area is to ensure that we're providing the best advice to whomever that commander or leader may be so that we can still deliver effective and also, important for the taxpayer, efficient return on, on what we're doing for marketing. We'll get... Hi, my name is Abigail Carey, and I'm an Army Civilian Fellow. 
and member of Gen Z, so this like panel is like absolutely fascinating to me. The number one like influencer for Gen Z is their parents. Their parents inform every decision that they make, including what to do with their future and going into the military. So after everything that their parents have been through and seen with the Army and other branches of service, how are you appealing to parents that this is a safe and best decision that their child can make with their future? Shannon, you want to talk about the uh, influencer and, and what we're actually doing in that area? Okay, fantastic question. Um, I think as far as from an influencer standpoint, um, if we go back a couple years to when we had What's Your Warrior 2, we did have um, a video that was focused on more of that parental type influencer, and I say parental, influencer being parent, coach, mentor, etc. And we tested that a bit uh, with What's Your Warrior 2. Um, here, going into the future, we are, I believe, from a, from a research and strategy standpoint, planning to do research on that, I believe, in, during FY24. Uh, and then from that research, we'll actually take uh, those learnings and incorporate it into um, a creative assignment brief that I, from marketing execution, would get from my counterpart, Colonel Horning, within strategy, so that we make sure that we're capturing creatively exactly what the research tells us. And I think to, you know, to that point, our creative is fully informed. The research and the strategy, the learnings that we get, don't just stop when that handover happens from strategy director to execution. Even when we go into our creative concepting um, and we have you know, a variety of, of creative concepts that we think may work, those creative concepts then go into testing and uh, with youth, with influencers, with soldiers, depending on what's necessary and required um, you know, for that particular insight. And then those learnings are then incorporated into how we create the creative that, that's put in market. So it's a very holistic view. And then even once it's out in market, we're continuing to get learnings and feedback um, that we then incorporate into from the strategy team um, consolidating that and providing recommendations and optimizations to our work to make sure that we're using the proper messaging that we're accounting for, the concerns that influencers may have um, for an influencer program, so that we make people feel comfortable um, in having the United States Army be the primary choice of employment for their, for their youth. Thank you very much for your uh, very motivating presentation, ma'am, and all. Uh, so I'm Lieutenant Colonel de la Chene from the French Army. He is an officer at CAC. So I've got a question. Um, don't you fear uh, to create a kind of artificial gap uh, between the population you recruit based on that scientific process you just demonstrate and the population you're able to keep in the Army? So if we consider that it's a bit caricatural, but if generation, generation Z doesn't want to go to war, but at the end you convince them to go to, to join the army, so it means that they are going to be prepared to war. So I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I'm really clear, but it's a kind of paradox that I don't just want you to explain to us. Thank you. Yes, sir, thanks for that question. Um, for sure, I understand, I think I understand the, the the point of your question, and there is somewhat of a paradox there, and I think that most likely uh, that particular piece is probably not specific to Gen Z only. I think that we could probably go back several generations and think about young people of that time and where they are in general in their youth and what's important to them and what they're looking to in the future and, and would guess that most of them are probably not necessarily looking forward to an outcome that involves actual armed conflict. Um, I, honestly, right, in, in the Army we would all hope that none of us are doing that, that all of our training is, is delivering on the deterrence that we hope to achieve. Um, but the reality is there is a purpose for the Army. The purpose of the Army is to fight the nation's wars and win the nation's wars. And that does exist. Having said that, there is already, um, through cultural reference and, and understanding a lot within the generation of, of kind of knowing that, 
knowing that aspect of that's what an army does. Our challenge as we look at it is to open their eyes to all of the other things that also exist. The possibilities that are there that help to accelerate their life in any other ways. Whether they choose a short term or whether they choose, maybe, maybe they went in with a short term idea but ended up turning it into a career. The realities of, um, of army service should things in, in, in geopolitics lead towards you know, armed conflict, they're very real, for sure. Um, however, I don't feel like that is going to be, um, I, I think the indoctrination in general and understanding is something that in the service they'll learn more about and, and, and make their choices as they grow as young adults as to whether how long they'll stay and, and their understanding and from an Army value standpoint, selfless service and how much that's inculcated. But before they're in that position yet, which they haven't learned the Army values, that's not yet, right? They're just average kid on the street, just like all of us were one day. The things that they're looking for are probably um, best addressed in communications about how we can help them in their lives do things even if they don't stay in the Army. Hi, I'm Jordan Wynn from Team RWB. I'm just curious about what social channel you're seeing the greatest ROI on, and what are you doing on that channel that's contributing to the success? So excellent question. Um, so social channels that we use are um, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, etc. Um, as far as what we see as being um, the greatest return on investment as of right now is YouTube. Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't Absolutely. forget, we also have our own YouTube channel. So if you oh, want to actually send some folks there, Go Army is, YouTube oh, channel yeah. will allow us to be able to do that. <laughs> Sir, we are finally getting to you in the back yes. here. Hey, uh, Steve Bain of military.com. Uh, real simple question. You guys put a fresh coat of paint on everything. What, what are the metrics for success that all this money is going towards something that's working. Well, I'll go there. So the metric of success is just continuing to actually do what we have done in this past year, and that's increased our awareness from a, a standpoint of people understanding the possibilities of what can be if you decide to become a member of the U.S. Army. But in addition to that, our numbers have been increasing. You know, um, the Secretary of the Army just talked about the fact that we had a stretch goal of 65,000, right? And we actually made 55,000 of that. So the intent there is showing that what we're doing is actually working. And we just have to continue to, to move in that direction and make sure, again, as we talk about the nesting, with what we do at the top from awareness standpoint to ensuring that that actually continues throughout the funnel to the recruiter so they can continue to have that initial face-to-face -face contract, which leads from there from just a lead to someone who is actually joining the military. Yes, ma'am. Hello, so my question is, so I wanted to first of all comment on the video because I did um, realize that it was a little bit different from some of the other videos that I've seen. So I, I do see that some of the research is working. Um, I saw some, th some things that were a little bit different for gen the Gen Z population. But so my, my question is um, with regard to research and um, parental influence as well as misconception of the military, what is the, the VAT? how vast is the research and how diverse is the research and um, how is the research composed? Thanks. So we have, um, not only did we start with a very concerted effort in, in developing a foundational body of research and understanding within Gen Z, um, we've also keep up with a routine update of it. So on a, on a frequency of bi-monthly and every half or uh, semi-annually, we've got several different sort of research products out in the field continuously to update. So our foundational research and understanding of Gen Z has enabled us to develop a custom segmentation. And in any other, in any other context of marketing, you'll be familiar with a, a customer segmentation model, which enables them to target what would be the most profitable customers. We're using this, this segmentation model to enable us to provide the right message to the right segment 
of prospect. Um, and we're also, so as we've completed that, we're also in the, in the process of doing a, a routine refresh of that, understanding that even as broad based as it was, um, that foundational research probably has a shelf life. Um, and the shelf life is shorter than before Pew Research comes up with a new name for a new generation. So we field a couple of products, the Army Pulse Survey, our Army Brand Tracker, and the Army, Marketing, or Army Market Assessment. That's the semi-annual, and these happen bi-monthly, quarterly, and then semi-annually to refresh our understanding of the audience's attitudes, their engagement with our content, where we are in salience with them, favorability, awareness, all of these types of metrics, and the actual composition of the, the pool is representative, of course, of the country. So all of our research efforts are representative of all of our population. Hey, thanks, John. So we will be here tomorrow. If you have any other questions, we'll be happy to ask them. Thank you for coming and understanding how we at AMO are marketing to the Gen Z population. Thanks for being with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's presentations. Please join us tomorrow at 09 for more from Warriors Corner.